Today on Little Country Kitchen, thank you for joining me. My name's Marianne. I'm going to be replacing this shelf and with a new one that has three tiers. Come join me. Okay, here's my setup in my spare bathroom in the hallway. And right now the lights are off or else it'd be really bright. And right here I have um, two pepper plants and a tomato plant that are dormant. We'll see if they survived after me digging them out of the ground and watering them only once a week. So I'm going to move this shelf out and put in a new shelf because I have another layer. So I have three layers up this time and I'm going to get that going. Here's the before. I'll show you the after. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so I got the four shelves up, but instead of leaving this one at the bottom, I'm actually going to move it up to the top so I can hang the lights on it by the magic of YouTube. Woo! Yeah, he's there. Okay, so there's my four shelves. Now I'm going to get the lights up. Hey friends, it's Marianne with Little Country Kitchen. So now that I have my shelf set up, I finally got the cover that I'm going to put over it. So it's kind of like a little greenhouse cover. So they have these kits on Amazon that you can get, but the racks are really flimsy and I didn't like those. So I bought my own rack separately and then bought my own cover and I already had everything else. So I don't care if it's like fancy up top anyway, because it's going to go on top of my counter and my spare bathroom. So I am getting so excited. Okay. So where do we start? So if you're a brand new gardener, obviously you have to start somewhere. So plant what you know, what do you buy at the store in the fruits and vegetables section that you think you can grow on your own? So, you know, carrots, tomatoes, uh, peppers. So, and what season are you in? What um, growing are you in? When's your average das average day of last frost? So I created a little chart like this. And this is more for like 5A, 5B people. My average day of last frost is May 27th. So I'm way later than like those South Carolinas. Probably by like at least a month and you can get catalogs from any seed company you want they will send them to you all the time what do you now with free shipping so um these are a couple few that i've got from buying seeds from them and i've bought, purchased from a few more my favorite is of course mi gardener because he is the least expensive seed and they have really good quality and I learned so much from him. He's really amazing. I think he said he's posted 1700 videos in the past seven to 10 years. So that's quite amazing. So you can get these seed catalogs for free. And then if you just want to browse them, you can do that. And they have beautiful pictures of what the food looks like and stuff like that. So, but I would definitely just stick with what's at Walmart. You know, that's okay too. I mean, it doesn't have to be fancy unless you absolutely want to try something new and, you know, have to have that. And I'll show you the ones that I absolutely love and I'm going to do again. So with my garden, I have my little garden folder here. And I went on to, I think it's called Garden Planner. I used that for the last, last year, whole year. And I decided not to continue it because I just am going to go with an empty map right here so I have three garden beds and then if you can see these lines right here I have two cattle panel rows that I can grow vertically 
And then I have, oh, it's not on here, but I have a little cold frame right here. I haven't used that yet. And I have an arch trellis. And I have two, it's on my other paper. I have two um, vertical garden stocks. Oh, and I'm getting a third one. I'm so excited. Okay, so, because I'll tell you when I'm going to be planting it all, because I have all this written out now. So, let me show you what I'm going to do. Okay, now you could probably see it better. All right, so I have my chicken run over here, and this plot of land is my only grass that I have on my property and it's about 3,000 square feet so I have three raised beds that are 4 by 16 so they're 4 feet wide and 16 feet long and over here I'm going to be doing kale and celery and collards so I can if I have extras I can just toss them over to the chickens um, we'll see if I'm going to end up doing melons. I'm not sure. They didn't quite turn out as well because I didn't give them enough time. Um, I'm, I definitely want to do cabbage. I love the red cabbage seems to do better at not getting the cabbage moths, but I also like green too because I want to do coleslaw. I guess you can do it with either. But I plan on doing six cabbage and eight kale and 12 celery. I want to do a couple cuke melons so they can climb over my trellis and long beans too. And then this two rows is going to be all tomatoes. So I'm going to do 30 tomato plants because I really want to do a lot of salsa and to make my own tomato based products. And then I'm going to do 16 peppers as well. So hopefully I won't have more than that. But anyway, so and then I have I want to do 30 carrots. So I have two, excuse me, um, eight square feet that I can do 30 carrots in. It's like two by eight. And then I want to do 20 bush beans. I can do that here. And then onions down the middle of this row. And I can do Swiss chard. I want to do two summer squash, the yellow squashes, two zucchini squash here, and then six broccoli right here. And then on my cattle panel trellis, I want to do half snow peas on this one and half snap peas because you can eat both of the pods so I'm not in the mood for shelling so I'm going to do those two. I'm still waiting for I believe the snow ones because I didn't get any. I did not have any so I'm waiting for those and there I still have time but I mean I can't even plant them yet so. And then here I want to do the Malabar red spinach because it's more heat tolerant and it doesn't go bitter and it doesn't bolt so that's why I want to try that one because last time my spinach bolted really fast. And then here I'm gonna do six squash, but I'm not sure if I can put them all together like this because they might cross pollinate. I don't know, I need to research that. If any of you know, please let me know. And then here in my cold frame, this is the first year I'm gonna be using it because it is pretty rinky dinky. Again, another Amazon purchase. It has two levels. It's like, it's angled like this. And it has one level down here, one level right here, and then this roof lifts up. So it like has a... And I put it together myself and it's blown over in the wind like three times and I literally finally screwed it into my the side of my wall of my house so it wouldn't go anywhere. So it's secure. And then over here I have um, my green stalks. And one I want, and when I get my third one, I want to do, I have a starting, I think I have 12 strawberry plants in the top of one of them. And I want a whole stock. I want a whole um, green stock of just strawberry plants. So I'm going to continue to propagate those. Hopefully they come back alive because, you know, and hopefully they overwintered. I've never done it before, so we'll see. I don't know what they look like when they're dead and... Not alive and anyway and then one's one I want to do lettuce I love salads and then herbs so I have 42 cells in two of them because two of them are leaf ones and then I think it's 32 in the regular size I can't remember but there's plenty of herbs strawberries and lettuce to go in these three just these three little square feet basically so that's my plan. So let me show you the seeds that I'm actually going to be doing and the, the varieties. 
Okay, so I have, just like everyone else, these photo boxes of seeds. And the way I divided them was, these are the cool winter, these are warm, and then a bunch of herbs and flowers, some lovely flowers, medicinal flowers, that kind of stuff. And then I have these extra ones that I am going to start planting. So this pink one is I have to start plant, plant before the end of February. So I still have four more days, thank goodness, because I'm still waiting for my soil. Because I canceled my order online. I was, anyway, I bought 10 bags of soil and they're like, oh, sorry, we don't have it. Cancel. Anywho, so, but I still have March 1st is the first thing I need to start is with chives, green onions, and scallions. So if you're starting out, I would definitely start very small because originally I definitely have overwhelmed myself with how many seeds that I have and the quantity and just keeping track of them all and even just the different um, varieties of like tomatoes. I mean, let me see how many tomatoes I have. I have 29 different tomato varieties. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's a little ridiculous, but um, I've come to the conclusion of this is what I'm going to plant. So I'm going back to the basics of what it's probably recommended from the very beginning. So you don't get overwhelmed. So this is the pink one for what I'm planting. I have to plant by the end of February. So I have Cosmos. Those are some pretty flowers. I believe they're edible too. Zinnias. You can see I've had these from multiple um, seed companies. Um, M.I. Gardener's Mexican Mint Marigold. I thought that sounded fun. And then just the regular marigold from Dollar Tree. These 25 cent packets are awesome. They actually grew a lot. I think I grew 12 of them. So I planted one at the end of each of my beds last year and they were very beautiful forget me not so I'm gonna do that give a little pop of blue poppy of course because of my baby kitty because she's so sweet that's her name is poppy lavender I'm actually decided not doing that one uh, flat Dutch cabbage so if you're not wanting to have a seed bank to kind of like be, be able to know how to preserve seeds that kind of thing I would definitely just go with what's at Walmart, what's at your local store. Um, I mean, when I went down to Vegas, they had seeds in the middle of December. So that was very shocking for me because we only see them seasonally, of course, in Utah. So definitely go with what you know or what you have. You don't have to um, go all out. And MI Gardener literally has all of the basics. So then I'm going to do a Victoria rhubarb because I love rhubarb. I, I grew up with that. My mom only had one plant and... That fed us a lot. I love a strawberry rhubarb pie. Mammoth Red Rock Cabbage. Oh, this was in a big giant package. And so I just condensed it into this little one so it would fit in here better. See, this, I bought these little envelopes on Amazon. I can link them down below. And then this is washi tape. So it's pretty. Of course, it's a rainbow. Who doesn't love rainbows, right? And because the washi tape comes off and on again. And I just wrote who it's from. And that kind of thing. So I'm going to plant those. Oh, I want to do some Swiss chard. That's from the Dollar Tree. Have some Ford Hook Giant Swiss chard. Some Thousand Island Kale. So I saw a gardener actually chop and drop these because he uses them basically as mulch to invigorate the soil, that kind of thing. And also this will really feed my chickens like one leaf. They'll attack one leaf. That'll be, they'll have a heyday just for one leaf. So that's why I went with Baker Creek heirloom seeds is because I wasn't able to find this anywhere else. They are a little bit more expensive. I think five or six dollars a package. So we'll, we'll see how that one goes. And then Lacinato dinosaur kale. That sounds fun because those are big too. Park spinach salad mix. We'll see how that goes. Um, Paris Island lettuce. Red Giant, a mustard or some brassica. Oh, okay, that's cool. I did not know that was a brassica. Marvel of Four Seasons, that's really pretty. I love that color. Who doesn't like to eat pretty things, right? Ice Queen lettuce, 
we'll see how they turn out if they actually grow. Pine tree and winter lettuce. I got this from what did I get it from? The green stalks. They're the ones that sent that to me. So and then bok choy. I did that last year in my green stock. It was actually really good. They they grew pretty good, about you know, 12, 15 inches. So I was quite surprised. And then lettuce iceberg. So that's what I'm doing in February. Okay, and then the green ones are from March. I'm very color coordinated. That's why I'm still wearing pink because it's still February. If you didn't notice that's so I kind of like to do things in blue. In January I like to wear blue. February I like to wear pink or red and white. And then I like to wear green in March. Who likes who just likes being festive, right? Give me a thumbs up. Or write your favorite holiday in the comments below and what you like to wear. Okay, so Mountain Valley Seeds. This is a local company in Utah. So it's garlic chives that I have. I have cilantro. I think that's just from Walmart. Flat leaf parsley. Ah, here's my sugar snap peas. I have a gourmet blend of beets. I've never tried these kind of color of beets, so I'm excited to try those. That's gonna be new for me. This one is the golden Detroit beet. That's also gonna be new. A carrot calliope ben blend. And then this is from Botanical Interests. This is Little Fingers and Red Cory. So Shantae, these actually ended up, I think I bought them back in October because they were having a sale and each packet was like, I think a dollar 87. So it's actually cheaper than in my gardener. So that's why I, I like this. So definitely check out the sales and sign up for the emails. Parisian carrot. So that's good for a container garden. I want to see if I can um, grow those in the green stalks. And another kind of carrot, Danvers. Scarlet Nantes, those are red ones. Uzbeki Golden. And then, oh, Atomic Red. There, aren't those fun? Oh, I lost one. Okay. Hi. Okay. Okay. And I plan on um, direct sowing the carrots because they don't like being transplanted. So, but I'm sure there's plenty of other videos on that who <laughs> definitely know more than me. This is only my fourth year of gardening. The first year, me and my mom and my sister went in on it, and um, I lived in a different town, and my mom and sister lived together, and I would come over like two or three times a week to see how the garden little plants were doing. Well. My sister convinced me that, oh, let's just put all the corn and the beans in the little grow things and see how they do. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I knew better because um, I, I know you're supposed to plant beans direct sown. I mean, they literally grew like two feet before it was even time to put them out in the garden. And that year I was doing a new method of gardening and I didn't have the ratio of the soil right. Everything died. <laughs> so. There we go. So, but my last two years have been really great, so I'm excited for this fourth, technically third year. So this one is a Hungarian yellow wax sweet pepper. Oh, these are all the peppers. And this one is a shishito pepper. Um, it's a ser serrano pepper. Jimmy Nardello. Tabasco pepper. We'll see if I actually have enough room for all these because you know I'm only supposed to do 16. <laughs> we'll see. Oh, another po poblano. So I can take that one out. Okay. Um, colored bell pepper. Okay. I don't know if you think this is the same thing like I do, but I think green bell peppers are atrocious. <laughs> like, would you eat a green banana? Why? <laughs> they need to be colored. The red and the orange and yellow are definitely better. I've never tried a purple one, so that's that would be fun. They actually grow long enough. Pepperoncini, that sounds fun. My husband loves peppers and hot stuff. Ring of fire, cayenne pepper to make cayenne sauce. Or just to save a sweet banana peppers. I want to do the pepper rings. Really good on pizzas and salads. 
sandwiches. Chocolate beauty pepper, isn't that pretty? And then purple beauty. Okay, then I have catnip, of course, for my kitty cats. Cilantro slowbo. I hear this is more um, frost tolerant. Champagne Bubbles Tomatoes. We're getting the tomatoes. The Golden Nugget Tomato. Um, beef Steak Tomato. I love. These are me and my husband's favorite. Especially if you're slicing on the tomato. Having a tomato sandwich. The Mila Tomato. I thought those were interesting. Like an orangey tomato. Early Girl Hybrid. Ooh, these yellow pear tomatoes are really awesome. They're like this big and you can pop them. Put them in salads. It's great. 42 day tomato. I grew those last year. They were, they were pretty good. And they were very prolific. As far as it's saying it's a container um, tomato, I wouldn't say so. I mean, it got gigantic and it was like spilling over. But plants want to grow and nature wants to thrive. So I thought it, I just let it do its thing. Brandy one yellow tomato. Ooh, that's pretty. And then a brandy one pink one. Oh, and their packages, I noticed, are they're glossy now. They're not papery. Let's see. Ace 55. And then San Marzano. So I want to do a lot of salsa, that kind of stuff. Spaghetti sauce. And then Crimson Cushion, another big one. Oh, and that's to remind me that I also want to do my onion sets, which are in another spot. I think they're under the table. Yeah. Already have onion sets. And... Oh, they're already sprouting, so let's definitely get them in the ground as soon as possible. Keep them out of the sun. Okay. Now, so we did February, March, now April. This is only going to be planted in April. Orange? Why did I pick orange for April? I don't know. Purple. Would have been better. I didn't have a free purple one. Oh, that's okay. Okay, so I want to do just one of these muncher cucumbers because I literally had a prolific crop. I planted probably 25 cucumbers in my trellis last year and they were growing like crazy. I had cucumbers growing out of my ears, but fun fact. Cucumbers cross-pollinate, so don't plant different species next to each other because they will cross and look different. So, Because I got some pickling tomato, um, pickling cucumbers that looked a little wonky like a, a lemon tomato. So it was like half pointy, half circle. So it, yeah, don't confuse the poor things. <laughs> Cucumelon. I'm going to grow those on the trellis, so I thought that would be fun. Just a couple. Boston Pickling Cucumber. Uh, I actually am not going to do that one. Watermelon Moon and Stars. So I actually saved these from last, oh, not last year, two years ago. This is what they look like. So they're like green with yellow spots on them, which is kind of fun. Okay, this one, Baker Creek, Giant Bullet Head. Oh, it's a wax melon. Okay. Honeydew Valencia. My dad's from Valencia, that's why. Spain. That's why I got that one. Ooh, this one looks red. Curry? Squash? Does that look fun? I love squash. I haven't met a squash I didn't like. Blue Harbor. Oh, this is my favorite. My neighbor, and when I lived in um, over by my mom, she brought us some Blue Harbor squash and cooked it. It is so sweet. It is delicious. It tastes like a yam or sweet potato. It's amazing. Pink banana jumbo. I thought it'd be fun. Even just having one sweet meat squash. And then of course, two of these yellow straight neck. I'm gonna try these again. Honey boat. Ooh. I did the delicata squash last year, but they didn't up, they didn't have good soilage and I was way too stressed and for amending it. And anyway, 
I could have been way better because I grew in just a little tiny one and even get its green stripes. And so I tried to even cook it today. It wasn't ripe at all. So I just basically have to toss it or compost it. Here's this one is a Lakota squash. That looks fun. These ones are my favorite. Costa Romanesco summer squash. So it's like a zucchini, but they are from Italy. And anything that says Romanesco is awesome. They're an heirloom from Italy. Definitely get them. These taste amazing. Like me and my son, because um, we grew both of them, of course. Um, my last zucchini squash actually did horrible. It didn't grow very well, but I had plenty from neighbors. But uh, we grew this one and I compared the regular zucchini, like the Black Beauty zucchini, to this one side by side and cooked them in the same just olive oil, butter, saute, salt, and pepper. This one tastes amazing, like has so much more flavor. Wow, you'll, you'll be amazed. And this one is a zucchini ramacante. That just is cool looking, right? Maybe I'll put one of those on my trellis. And then a round zucchini squash. I just thought those were cute. Kind of like a one-stop pop meal for me. Because I'm really the only one that um, eats squash. So I don't know if making all these squashes is a good idea because I'm really the only one that eats them. Mm. And I'll have to rethink that one. So definitely start with just what you know. Just get the basics of what you want to do. Like um, Rachel from that 1870 so she has a great movie a video on her 10 top things to grow but even I don't have room for corn and I tried um, yams last year and they did grow I, I bought the slips from I can't remember what store I bought them from or what company and um, I had about 16 slips about 12 of them lived um, they just weren't as hardy or I, again, I could have amended them better. So I think that was just, you know, user error on my part, but they take up a lot of space. So we'll see. And I also planted potatoes again, which take up a lot of space. And I feel if you can buy it from a store cheaper or just as cheap, might as well. So that's what I'm going to do. But I have five different broccolis. I have six different cabbages. I have four different cover crops, nine different onions, 10 different peas, five radishes, five unique veggies like kohlrabi. Has anyone tasted kohlrabi? I have no idea what that tastes like. Or like a rutabaga. I've never tasted that either. I have four beets, nine different carrots, three cauliflowers, eight kales, five Swiss chard, 18 lettuces, which who doesn't like salads, right? I actually don't like mustards or well, like the peppery ones. I have a sensitive tongue, so it's, I do not like spicy stuff at all. I have 10 bush beans, eight pole beans, one celery, of course, you know, Utah celery, which is ironic because I can't get it to grow. I don't know if it, it's obviously just me because it's named after my state. So <laughs> I have four ground cherries. Oh, I so wanted those to grow. Love fruit. It tastes like a pineapple had a baby with a tomato. That's what it tastes like. Ground cherries are awesome. I have six different corn or popcorn varieties. I have eight different cucumbers, five spinach, three eggplants, seven summer squash, 21 different peppers, six pumpkins, 10 winter squash, 29 tomatoes. What was I thinking? Um, six melons, five watermelons, 18 herbs, 18 flowers, and 34 herbs and teas. So I have literally 321 different seeds. Do not do that to yourself. You will go crazy. <laughs> so yeah, do as I say, not as I do. Mm. We'll see. But I did, I actually bought, I think I did buy two more orders from seed companies because I wanted to get, I couldn't find my Malabar, red Malabar spinach. I don't know where it went. So I had to buy another one. And what was the other one that I just bought? Oh, the Sun Gold Cherry Tomato. They're like this big. I bought a plant last year. It is absolutely fabulous. Like my favorite cherry tomato whatsoever. Like they, it really is one of the best as a sun gold. So anyway, thank you for joining me. I'm so excited. And once my dirt comes, I can actually go pick it up because Ace has it in stock. So I'm going to go pick that up tomorrow and then I can start planting all these things. Thank you so much. And please give me a like and subscribe. And if you learn anything, please share with someone else if you think they might enjoy it. 
Thank you so much. And you have a rest of your happy weekend. Thank you. Bye, friends.